cool. Okay, so we're doing portraiture, um, but we're doing Andrew Loomis style. And if you don't know who he is, um, he was a big deal, really big deal. Um, uh, he's kind of like, he was deemed like the master of portraiture. And he's somebody who's been taught for several years. Um, and it, it's, the way he teaches is very, very much kind of like the way I teach where I'm always wanting to think through things like transparently, you know, and I'm always talking about drawing from the middle out. Um, so he starts more of like some of the more complex drawing, which is more three quarter. Um, so we know the frontal perspective is something like this, right? To where you're shouldered up with somebody, okay? Very, very uncommon in, in real life. Like, unless you're taking a school photograph, you know, where they, they sit you down, you know, and they put that cheesy background, you know, behind you. Um, and then they have you, they don't do a profile, you know, unless you, like, you've been arrested, typically. Um, so profile's just not naturalistic. But we're gonna practice all three. So three quarters is the most naturalistic. It's the most flattering and it's the most common. That's just like, in any given day, that's what you're going to see, right? Um, so usually I start with three quarters. But sometimes it's helpful to talk about Andrew Loomis's method with regard to the profile, okay? Um, so the first thing that he does is he breaks down like what the shape analysis is of the head, right? Um, so typically in high school, what you're taught is that it's an upside down egg shape, okay? Does that sound like familiar for some of you, you know? Like your, like your drawing instructors might tell you to do, like go ahead and draw a circle and then, you know, make it like that, right? And then half, half, and half kind of thing, which is where all of the facial features are gonna go. Um, what I find is that a lot of times when we're doing that, students will draw the eyes up here, they'll draw them too big typically, and then when they're drawing the nose, they usually make the nose much longer just to try to get it to meet this area. And it seems like the, the chin and mouth kind of get compromised with that. I see a lot of high school drawings that end up with a lot of forehead with regard to that as well. Um, the Loomis method makes it to where we start with a sphere, okay, instead of the idea of an upside down egg or whatever, and then we build the jaw onto that. So you want to think about the human skull as being a sphere with that jaw going into it, but we sculpt, right? So kind of like thinking about that two, the two point perspective um, application drawing, right? where we kind of created like a two point situation and then we carved something out of it to the terminology that I use so that you're drawing it uh, such that you're eliminating certain parts of the rectangular prism that you've made. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a profile here. Uh, and what we're gonna be doing today, we're gonna be drawing, we're gonna be drawing mostly three quarter, okay? But I, I'm cool with some, some frontals and some profiles, um, that's okay but I really want the bulk of your 50 heads to be three quarter, right? So that you have a lot of practice with that. So, <clears throat> and you'll see that I draw fairly energetic and I'm definitely using the right, okay? The, the most correct way to hold my pens. Um, and I'm gonna draw large, but you wanna think about like how much of the space you're gonna need. You'll probably have to take one or two of these home. For the profile, when we're looking at somebody on the side of their head kind of thing. And I don't know, for me, I just like to repeat my circle until I have what I like. Very rarely am I gonna make that perfect at first. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a smaller circle inside, okay? Now what this smaller circle inside is representing is it's representing this area on the side of the head, okay, right here. And it's kind of a flatter area, right? So when we have a sphere, Okay? You need to think of it like you're carving that area off. Okay? So this would be the carved off area. Right? So if I, draw, if I draw this as frontal and I start with my circle like this and then I cut it in half it's for my brow line, not my eye line. That's very important. Okay? When you're doing this, think of it as a brow line because the eyes should be further down. And then I know I'm gonna have to carve off some of the sides of the head like this. But I'm gonna keep this as the top of the head, okay? Now once I've carved off the side, <clears throat> like this, 
Okay. Then I want to look at where that's going to go across here. Okay. So what I can do from there is I can measure that, come down here, create another mark. What I'm going to do here is kind of help you see how the profile works with that. I'm going to go ahead and dictate how he's looking or she's looking up or down. Okay. And this line going through here will dictate that. So this person's going to be looking like pretty much straight, not up, not down. Okay. That's why that line's straight up. If I were to draw it back, they're looking up like this, looking down. Okay. Now, this line here that crosses this in the middle is going to help me determine where the brow line goes. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend that line. You probably want to get these in your sketchbook at this point until it hits the outside, right? For this profile. Okay. At that point, you remember like here, where I had these areas that I carved off, okay? I was able to measure here. So now I can go ahead and take this and I can draw that straight up. What that's gonna represent is gonna be the nose line, okay? So I know this is my nose line here, okay? And what that's doing for me is that's giving me a situation where the brow, the nose, and the bottom of the chin are gonna be in relationship to one another so that it's halves, right? And I'm actually probably going to bring in an area here for the hair. Because a lot of people forget that the hair does comprise part of the head, actually. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to take that measurement. I'm going to come down. Can you see that okay? Okay. I'm going to take that measurement. I'm going to come down. And I'm going to make a mark there. Okay. So that's going to help me see kind of where that jaw is is supposed to go, where that chin is supposed to go, right? So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to draw a straight line down. Hopefully you're starting to see this skull shape kind of in profile, right? I'm going to come back here and I'm going to think of this area as kind of this hinged up spot right here where my jawline is going to go. So I would have that come down, I would have it come around, and I would have that work out there. Now I'm gonna eliminate some of this or carve it out to help me get that spine area in there. My ear should be about like right back here because we know that our ears are in line with our brow and our nose. So if we were to like draw that over our face, it's gonna, it's gonna frame those things in. So when I'm looking at a profile, what I wanna do is I wanna actually bump out here for the brow. So by bumping that out, it doesn't allow me to stick the eyes way up high, okay? So then I come back and I kind of carve out a spot for my eye. And then I go ahead and I bring out that nose. And as I start to bring that nose out, a lot of times I'll protrude that further, okay? To kind of help me get that profile worked in. I'll bring it back in. I'll get the nostril involved. And then I want roughly halfway between my nose and my chin to be where my mouth's gonna go, okay? And then think about the profile. I'm gonna bring this lip in. I'm gonna kick part of the lip out. I'm gonna kick this lip out. I'm gonna kick this down and then out. Now, if you're thinking, okay, that chin doesn't look big enough, right? Um, I can always make modifications on this, okay? Like for instance, if I think that this ought to go further down, depending on what I'm drawing, I can add a little bit more to that. That's okay. This is, but this is kind of just a, a generality, okay? And not everyone is going to fit this. So when, then I'm, when I'm working with this, I'm gonna begin to carve this off back here, and I'm gonna give myself an area for that now. For my hair, you know, I might decide that that kind of starts in here, kind of goes into this, comes off the head a little bit. You typically have an occipital bone back here, 
back here, okay? And that usually aligns with the eyes, so you'll have like a little bump in there, okay? So if I were to work that profile style, or rather frontal style, I've got my eye line here, okay? I worked in roughly where my nose is gonna go. Elongate the chin just a touch. Now I'm gonna bring that jawline in here. Now I wanna look halfway between here and here, and that's gonna help me with where that mouth goes. Now, when you're doing this, um, I don't necessarily want you to like draw the features perfectly. You're just gonna give me a representation of where those features would go. So a lot of times I tell students, just give me like the tip of the nose here, and then just give me like a good bridge that moves up, that represents that you know how to do this, right? I'm good. Um, and since we know this is a brow line, it's gonna be important to create a landmark there, like a face mark, I guess, and get the brow integrated into that spot. That way you've given yourself a spot to draw the eyes in here rather than way up there. And they can sit back in that pocket, okay? Now this area here that I've decided corresponds with the brow, right? That's gonna be the top of the ear. This area here that corresponds with the bottom of the nose, it's gonna be the bottom of the, bottom of the ear. So I can just create like a very simple representation of that. Again, we'll get more detailed as we go along. And so when it comes to like drawing basic features, again, I don't need it perfect, okay? Your three quarter, is gonna be a lot different. We start with the most perfect circle that we can. And instead of having straight lines in here, okay, what we want are ellipses, okay? Because we wanna think about how we can see through the sphere, right? Um, the first time that I ever watched a video on this and kind of learned this method, um, the dude used clay and he made a sphere and then he drew these lines on it and he shaved the sides off and it made total sense to me. I also saw a method where there was an artist that um, was using one of those little hamster balls and he had taken a Sharpie and drawn all the way around it a straight line so that when he moved it around, you could start to see how that sphere, or how those ellipses would change, right? However that sphere moves. So I wanna maybe think about, that's not a very good circle. <laughs> I wanna maybe think about First off, where I want my person kind of looking. So I want to think about this one here first. Um, and I want to create a good ellipse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start about here. I'm going to work that ellipse in there. Okay. Now it gets confusing a little bit when you're dealing with this line and this line, right? So you got to figure out which one you want to deal with. When I was first drawing this whole thing, I was thinking I wanted this line here. So what I'm probably gonna do to help, help myself out is erase off this line here behind so I don't get confused about that. Now what I wanna do is I wanna figure out my symmetry line because here we have a good symmetry line. Here, our symmetry line doesn't really exist because you know it's a profile. We don't need a symmetry line in that situation because we don't see the whole face, right? So our symmetry line is going to behave differently as the face begins to turn. So maybe this dude's kind of looking, you know, just a little bit up, but I want him kind of looking over. So now I'm going to try this kind of an ellipse. So what I want to do at this point, again, so I don't get confused, is get rid of this mark here, this mark here, and I definitely want to clean up my line work. Okay, so we've got the sphere now for our skull. Now what we want to do is we want to figure out where we're going to cut that side of the head off, okay? So that side of the head, 
when we cut that off, it should be similar to this ellipse, okay? So like, if we could make a perfectly parallel ellipse, only smaller to that, and put it right in the middle on this, okay? Since this is our, this is our eye line, and we know that this is roughly the area that we're cutting off right here, right? Um, like a computer could do that very easily. Um, we would need to think about how that line's going to be similar. And so what I do is I kind of go over it a little bit like this, and then I want to center it up on here. I'm just going to practice that ellipse. I'm going to do it several times until I'm pretty happy with it. When I decide that I've got a good one, like, those work. When I decide I've got a good one, I'm going to go ahead and erase down to the good one that I like. And I want you guys to leave these lines in here, okay, on your 50 heads. That way you're showing me that you understand application. Now I feel like I can have that cut off. Now what I want to do, like remember, this was straight, right? What I want to do is I want to bring this around and I want it to go straight back. So what I'm going to do there, is I'm going to go ahead and cut that straight across. It's going to help me center up my ear. And then what I want to do is I want to get one going straight down. So if it kind of looks like he's looking kind of a little up kind of thing, that means I need to go back like this just a little bit. So it's not perfectly straight, it's kind of going back a little to help reinforce that idea, okay? So then I know where my ear's supposed to go, roughly back here. I know where my brows are supposed to go. And I know right here that I can take another parallel line that's parallel to this and I can start here, and I can carefully bring it around like this. And that helps me with this dimension here. And then I know where my nose should go. I can come down here and create another mark here. And I know roughly how far down my chin should go. And what I do here is I just start with this and I go straight down, straight down because we're not going to look at any of this ellipse stuff once we've got that pulled down. Okay, so they call this spatial area kind of a shield shape, and you can look at that if you see that here, right? And so usually to create that shield shape, you want to get this little jaw hinge area in here, bring it down, Bring it around, and it depends on if you're drawing a woman, right, or a man. I'm used to drawing men, I'm used to drawing myself, so having a nice, strong chin down here, and then I kind of bring it back. And then I want to bring my shield shape back over here. I want to complete that shape. And what I do, is I simply erase off the rest of my sphere inside. And then I create my, my kind of basic, um, my basic features in here. So I can get that tip of the nose in here. I can add a little nostril action over here. I can bring that up bring that up. I usually change that to represent the brows. I get the eyes under. So one thing that I saw in the other class a lot was I saw um, people drawing their eyes really big. Okay. Now if your eyes are really big, okay, they're going to run into each other. And the reason for that is because you have basically the space between your eyes is one eye. Right? And then usually how far apart your eyes are, right? So the eyes kind of dictate everything. 
is how long your mouth is, right? So since this is going on YouTube, I'm not gonna give any examples, but <laughs> I know people that like complain about having like wide eyes or whatever, like set apart eyes, and it's usually because they have bigger eyes, right? Um, and that's generally in our culture, I think, um, something that we think of as being quite beautiful. So if you think about like how big you've made that one, that means the other one should kind of start in here. And if something looks wrong, it probably is, right? Okay, we wanna go halfway between this and this to get the mouth involved. And we're just gonna go with a very generic lip scenario. We'll add this underneath. And then what I like to do is a little bit of planar analysis on the side, just to kind of help show like how the cheekbones, the jaws and things like that. And if you feel the sides of your head, you'll feel this, okay? And so I like to kind of like work this across. Sometimes I'll break this into a couple of different planes too, just to kind of show like the structure of the chin. And then depending on who you're drawing, of course, we'll carve out what we see on the contour of the face. And you're probably thinking Y50, right? Well, the more practice you have with this and the more that you imagine using this in real life, the easier it's gonna be for you. <clears throat> and then we probably throw some hair up in here. So what I want you to do is I want you to try, again, mostly three-quarter, okay? You, if you wanna to try to fill up a page with 50, you're gonna to have to draw smaller. If you wanna do front and back, I'm cool with that. Um, if you wanna put it on two pages, I'm fine with that. Um, feel free to go for some frontal and profile. I'll stick this up to help you. But out of the 50, okay, I want you to actually try to shade out and put features that represent somebody on three of them, okay? So you're gonna start with this, and then you're going to apply the features. Um, so like in the other class what I did was, I kind of showed about halfway through class how I would do that with this three quarter over here and how I would do that with, you know, this frontal perspective here. Like I used him as an example because like his skull would probably stop here, right? And people really don't think about all the volume. Like this dude has volume up in his hair. He'd be using hair products, right? So I would have to draw that up and off. And it's the same thing with the beard, you know? Like I would have to add a lot more for the bottom of the beard. So you wanna think about those nuances when you're adding those things. So you're gonna draw 47 that are more or less just, you know, a demonstration that you know what you're doing. Okay. Have them going down, have them looking up, have them looking to the side. Um, and it's all dictated by how your sphere works, what you do with an ellipse. So like if I chose that one, that would be pretty crazy. <laughs> and then if I chose this one, like how would I go from there if this were, if this were my brow line and this were my symmetry line? and what would I carve off, and how much of that would I see, right? All of those different scenarios and practice are gonna help you a lot when it comes to actual application. Cool? You guys have any questions? Okay, the way we do this is this big paper, and you wanna get yourself a big, uh, we'll do a Jason. 